I prepared a few. I prepared um, a few slides um, that I will present to you now. I mean, we don't have to go through all of them. Um, we can focus on what is more interesting um, to you as well. Uh, ah, share screen here. Okay. Yeah, so, okay, so um, Unido is basically uh, providing a service, I mean, among the, the several services that Unido provides to its member state, there is one which is for the, to support the transformation of conventional industrial parks to eco-industrial parks. Uh, I mean, this has been implemented, let's say, mainly through one big pro program, the one where also Klaus is uh, working as uh, CTA, uh, funded by Switzerland. Uh, but I mean, in general, it's one of the services that we can provide to to countries. Uh, so the. Um, the agenda that um, prepare for for today. Um, so we, um, I will start with an introduction about eco industrial parks, uh, the definitions and and the key concept um, concept and principles. Uh, then I'll try to explain which are the practical benefits and importance of eco industrial parks or EAP as we say uh, for sustainable development. I also uh, put together a few case studies from other countries. Then Klaus will guide us through Unido's work um, on EAP, what Unido is doing to, to, to support countries on EAP. And finally, a couple of slides on the eco, uh, on the eco industrial park framework, uh, which Unido has developed together with uh, the World Bank and GSZ and on the UNIDO tools that we have uh, to support countries. And yeah, at the end, um, let's keep some time for, for questions and, and, and answers. And if there is anything, feel free to inter interrupt me. So, so first of all, I mean, what is an eco-industrial park? Uh, so the, the definition is a community of manufacturing and service businesses located on a common property. And the idea is that they try to improve their environmental, economic, and social performance through collaboration. And the idea is that uh, by working together, the benefit that they can achieve is more than the benefit that they, they would achieve by you know, working on uh, by themselves. But I mean, at, at the end, it's about creating more resource efficient and cost effective industrial parks, which are more competitive, can attract investment, and are more um, risk resilient. Uh, so, in order to be considered an eco industrial parks, uh, the industrial park must must demonstrate highest standards of environmental performance, uh, should do efforts towards social responsibility, uh, should be committed to uh, the society and stakeholders, especially you know the, those communities which live around the industrial parks and can be affected by the industrial parks, should demonstrate higher economic performance. Uh, so for example, I mean, not be you know, subsidized, by by the state, I mean, they should really, I mean, run um, like a business. They should try to adopt as much as possible resource efficient production methods. Uh, industrial parks should support the development of industrial synergies among uh, companies inside the industrial park, but also maybe with service providers or other companies which are around the, which are linked to the industrial parks. And, and reuse uh, waste energy and, wa and waste materials as much as possible. And this 
okay contributes to a number of of uh, sdg i mean now we don't go into the details but I mean, it's it's obvious that if you manage to achieve all this also uh, your sustainable development goals uh, are, are closer uh, okay so there are different uh, terminologies which are used internationally but all revolve around the same principle and concept i mean sometimes you 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 hear eco industrial park sometimes green industrial park or green investment zone or a special investment zone i mean they are i mean all terms which are more or less um, similar so i mean we we use uh, eco industrial parks but um, by extension uh, also an area or a zone which wants to be you know low carbon or more sustainable can be considered uh, an eco industrial park there are basically two uh, okay we can do one distinction so one is the brownfield so basically industrial park which are already existing with already existing industrial activity and green fields so the new one the one which are being planned uh, for example the the program where klaus works we work focuses on brownfields so the idea is that uh, we want to uh, to to approach companies uh, to improve the infrastructure, the management, the, the zoning structures, or greenfield. So, I mean, if you have a um, new industrial park, you have an opportunity to, to plan the industrial park to make it sustainable in the future. So, I mean, where to put which companies, which infrastructure you need, uh, I mean, things that if you if you plan well in advance it will be much easier much cheaper um, to implement an EIP and also you have the possibility to to decide to some extent which kind of companies you want to attract to your industrial parks but of course I mean if you want to then prioritize the environmental benefits better that you work on 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 brownfields you know that we have uh, countries with uh, very old and polluting companies which I mean have no idea about for example what to do with their waste they don't care about social responsibility I mean there we can do a lot with immediate results but you know if you have the possibility to plan in advance um, you know in the long run it's even uh, it's even better so in 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 general we can um we can assist countries on five topic so these are the five components of industrial parks one is to work with the park management so in order to improve uh, the services that the park management can offer uh, and the governance so better services means also more you know value added more income for the park management entity Better governance means that they know exactly what is going on. So it's much easier to report, to report to the, to the central government, to report on uh, uh, CSR, on CSR reports. It's much easier to, you know, to market the industrial park and to let the manufacturing companies enter global supply chains. Uh, then another area of intervention is resource efficient and cleaner production so we look at how companies are, are manufacturing and see where improvements can be done and then assist the companies to actually you know buy the technologies change the, the practices get the money that they need or uh, industrial and infrastructure synergies i mean we we typically bring uh, companies together, stakeholders together, to see where um, you know a joint improvement could be done. For example, one company has a, a waste that they consider a waste, 
but maybe this waste can be used by another company as an input. Or for example, one company has uh, waste heat. Uh, this heat can be used for other purposes. Or, or for example, you know, shared photovoltaics plants or shared uh, wastewater treatment plants. Um, then um, we work on industrial urban synergies. So we try to in, um, involve also the the communities near the industrial park because sometimes there are there are synergies. For example, I don't know the for example one industrial urban industrial synergy we are developing now in Vietnam. So there is um, good quality treated wastewater which is going to be used by the community for fire uh, firefighting services. Um, and they, um, in this way, you know, uh, the, fire, the, the, the municipality would, uh, would have, I mean, the, um, the water would pay less. I mean, there are synergies from, uh, there are advantages from both sides. And finally, spatial planning and zoning. So we sit together with the, with the park developers or with the local authority to see what could be you know, um, in what, what could go where and how to to organize how to make a, an an ideal plan for for for, for expanding industrial zones or for new industrial zones so yeah we um, we typically work work from two sides so top down um, so we work also with the government to develop policies so enabling policies uh, and then we work bottom up so with the companies to show to demonstrate to the companies and to the other stakeholders what can be done so we typically have some you know target industrial parks where we i mean that that we used to show to other industrial parks what can be done Um, so yeah, this slide is just to say that there are really different, uh, realities. So each industrial park is unique. Uh, you have industrial parks at different development stage. You have big industrial parks, small industrial park, um, uh, high tech, low tech, um, with challenging condition, with very favorable con condition. So there is not a unique, uh, solution. Uh, so we always have to, to, to see, I mean, what can be improved and what can be offered to, to the specific industrial park, given certain conditions in for, in, for example, you know, if I, if I'm thinking about Iraq, I mean, I would say, okay, maybe, um, uh, you know, there are certain issues which are maybe similar to what we are facing to, to Egypt, you know, in terms of, you know, size of the, of the in, of the industrial zones or um, climate, etc. So um, it's important to to have always the right, let's say, reference and customized uh, solutions. So which are the the key benefits? So here, uh, try to summarize in one slide. So we we reduce the use of materials or water and energy. We reduce the procurement cost less waste which means you know less problems uh, we reduce greenhouse gases less pol pollution uh, increase the, com the competitiveness better jobs uh, workers are safer and happier uh, easier to get access to new technologies and to finance. I mean, if you, if you are, you know, if you, if you can be considered an eco industrial park or a green industrial park is some is oftentimes easier to attract uh, financing. Uh, you are more resilient at the end is about, um, reducing the, the risks because I mean, you, you want an industrial park to operate not in the next five years or 10 years, but you want. I mean, if you do, you know, this major investment, you want your industrial park to have low risk for the next 50 years. So you want to be, you know, safe on, in terms of what could come 
on environmental regulations. We want to be safe in terms of, you know, social, um, your relationship with the community. You want to have enough uh, skilled workers, not tomorrow, but also in the next 10 years, which means that today you should start to invest on that. So, so the, the beneficiaries are the industries, but also uh, park management, government, the, and, and the environment and the local communities. Um, yeah, so, so let me, I mean, just, uh, spend a couple of minutes to explain where this eco industrial park idea comes from. So we, as UNIDO, we've been working for decades, uh, on supporting single companies to become, um, uh, more efficient. Uh, so, I mean, a lot of experience with that. Uh, the problem is that I mean sometimes, especially when when we are dealing with small uh, small and medium enterprises, the transaction cost, so what you have to invest per company is very high. So instead of providing uh, support to single companies, the idea of the industrial parks um, approach is to work with one entity who is the industrial park manager to strengthen the capacity of this entity, which then can provide services, not to one or two companies, but to all the companies in the industrial park. And this way we reduce the transaction cost. I mean, to, to have, you know, one expert um, identifying energy efficiency opportunities in company by company, uh, it's much more expensive than say, okay, we we um, we offer an edge efficiency improvement program. Let's say, yeah, a program to to all the companies, and then we have you know a bunch of experts which go there with the same approach, same methodology to all the companies. Um, at the end, maybe also offering similar. Um, solutions i mean if you are talking about you know improving the efficiency of the motors i mean the motors are the same in i mean more or less in each in each um, manufacturing company so it makes sense to you know to offer one solution with maybe one financing um uh, mechanism to all the companies in industrial park in this way we reduce the cost we reduce the time and we have one entity who will take care of this also after our project ends to build the capacity of the park man management it means that after our you know our small project finishes you still have skilled people there who can who can continue and can also make money out of it I mean money coming from the uh, resource efficiency gains at the end um, so uh, yeah, to, to, together with this resource efficiency and cleaner production approach, which we call RECP, resource efficiency and cleaner production, th there is also the industrial synergy um, concept. So we don't work with individual companies, but we work with multiple companies, two or more companies, to see how they can work together, uh, how, I mean, what they can exchange not only in terms of of material and energy, but also in terms of um, I don't know knowledge or let's say shared uh, training centers, or maybe they can go to to a to a supplier and ask for you know for a uh, I mean they have they have stronger negotiation power also with the with the suppliers. Uh, so yeah, let, let's say that the primary focus is the RECP and industrial uh, synergy development, uh, which yeah will improve economic, environmental, social performance, and increase resource efficiency. So this is a bit I mean where where this idea of eco industrial parks um, comes from. Uh, this. Uh, 
bit old numbers, but gives you an idea of, of what can be achieved in terms of RECP, resource efficient and clear production. Uh, so for six years, for example, we worked with number of countries. Here you can see Colombia, Peru, Morocco, South Africa, India, Vietnam, China. Uh, this was under the an, a previous program, which was called RECP program. Uh, and here, I mean, you can see uh, the numbers. I mean, these numbers come 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 mainly from Vietnam because Vietnam was the one where we we put more resources that time. Uh, so eighteen parks participating in this exercise, one hundred eighty companies. At the end, we identified you know many RECP opportunities. Almost 1,000 were implemented. So 1,000 RCP opportunities uh, includes also very simple practices like you know switching off the lights or cleaning cleaning the motor, but also um, also more let's say um, investment intensive opportunities. So it's it's a mix, but you see you know very high number because vast majority were uh, no cost or low cost uh, interventions which still led to important waste reduction important greenhouse gas mitigation uh, financial savings yeah 6.7 million so so let's consider that in this we invested almost the same amount of money so I mean, we invested you know something like maybe Five millions, five six millions, uh, to get uh, estimated financial savings of more than six million per year. So you know o o opportunities that you can pay back you know, on average after one year or less. Um, yeah, okay, this is something that I mean I mentioned already. So when we talk about industrial synergies, there are different types of synergies. Uh, for example, utility synergies. I mean, you, you ask the same service providers to provide service to several companies. Or supply synergy, for example, uh, yeah, clustering of companies in, in the in the supply chain, or, or for example, um yeah, I mean, it's it's easier to get, you know, raw materials, not only to one company, but for several, especially for those industrial parks, which are sector specialized. Uh, Byproduct synergy, so a waste for one company could become an input for the other one. Uh, urban industrial synergy, as I said, I mean, benefits for the industrial park and the community uh, nearby. Okay, this is a bit, let's say, a bit... Um, definitions uh, so the the beauty of uh, working on several countries at the same time is that we can also uh, do some cross country assessment and com and and analysis um, and this is where Klaus especially uh, come, comes in because he's, he's a bit, uh, let's say, the, the overview on, on what's going on in the several countries. Uh, so, for example, I mean, this um, uh, analysis that we published uh, a couple of years ago, uh, we assessed, you know, five parks in Colombia, three parks in Egypt, 11 parks in Indonesia, so that we could have already an idea of where countries are more strong and where they need more support. So, for example, uh, we see that you know, in Colombia, the park management and the economic performance is already very good. So maybe we have to put less resources on that. Whereas in Egypt, we have you know more problems on the environment performance, more problems on the social performance. So that's where we should put more our uh, our attention. And resources. Uh, this also, I mean, also uh, one of these uh, multi-country analysis. We basically looked at the performance 
of uh, industrial parks um, in all the countries. Um, so you can see on the left, the private industrial parks, uh, the center, the public um, owned industrial parks and on the right, uh, public private partnership. So, I mean, one conclusion and I mean, uh, not difficult to guess uh, is that whatever the park management type, industrial park should be run like a business. So, I mean, we see you no know, private private parks have in, in general, so I mean, not always, but in general, higher performance than public industrial parks because because they have to you know yeah they have to fight for i mean for their um survival no so and so in which which means that they could you know give more services to the to the resident companies more services and in general more efficient services so i mean it doesn't mean that it's public Industrial parks are bad, but they should be able to to be run like a business and and to and to yeah provide high services to the to the to the tenants. Uh, okay, I mean here I've, I will go a bit quick because I mean I I, I mean I put together several uh, case studies that we collected from around the world. Uh, but I mean, every case study is very specific and takes a lot of time to explain, but okay, quickly maybe uh, this one, uh, Eco Plus, which is in, in, in Austria, uh, not far from Unido headquarters. It's a good example of a park where you have, so, oh, okay, this is not an eco industrial parks like, you know, like a, a very defined area closed by a, by a fence. Uh, it's rather, let's say, a, a, an area. Uh, and, and there is this management entity, EcoPlus, who tries to, to improve and develop the network and to offer, I mean, to, to market the industrial zone to investors. They basically focus on developing the infrastructure and then they rent, uh, no, sorry, they, they, they sell um, the area to the tenants. Um, they, they support a uh, link with research centers. They, they have also an, uh, an incubator for, for new uh, startups. So they develop the area, they develop the infrastructure and after 20 years they leave they go to another area I mean, they do you know agreement with the with the local uh, government to develop a new area so uh, it works very well i mean very light if you want um, structure um, and but let's say i mean uh, companies they are happy to pay more to stay there because they get better services uh, this uh, Kalunborg in Denmark is oftentimes referred as the maybe the oldest and uh, more successful uh, industrial symbiosis um, experience. Everything revolves around the so one big oil refinery from Statoil, who was um, established in Kalunborg, and then this big refinery needed. A big energy, let's say, a big power plant to, to to support it, and then a number of companies like this plaster plasterboard manufacturing plant uh, or a biotechnology production facility who needed heat, we started to develop around. So so that they did not develop the area. Uh, uh randomly but they had you know important amounts of waste like you know gypsum or or other other waste that can be used for other uh, manufacturing purposes so 
So they they attracted the right companies to make use of the right waste. I mean, it's a very long process. It took you know decades, uh, and today it's it's a very efficient, it's a very resource efficient and cost efficient um, production area. Yeah, which led to a lot of you know savings in terms of oil consumption, coal consumption, water emissions, waste. So all this you you see fly ash, sulfur, gypsum, which were considered a waste. Now they've been reduced in the the sense that they are being used by somebody else. Okay, there's something in the UK, uh, something in, in France. Okay, this is, uh, uh, it's basically, um, there was a surplus of, 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 of hot water uh, by, by a local um, ArcelorMittal, who is a, a big uh, producer of steel. And this has been used for I mean to to power to to power a hospital, uh, urban community buildings, but also other uh, manufacturing companies who needed uh, heat. So um, mainly aqua uh, aqua uh, aquaculture producers, for example. Uh, this is another example, Quinana in Australia. Okay, it's just I mean, it's very successful because they managed to develop uh, industrial symbiosis uh, and uh, they are also a very good example on uh, building a good relationship with the community uh, surrounding the area uh, when they started they didn't have many skilled uh, workers uh, so there was really i mean a lot of investment in order to you know, to attract people to the uh, to the industrial area to work together with the with the community around the industrial area to into to have um, skilled workers so um, vocational schools uh, now two thirds of the workers live in a radius of 15 kilometers from the industrial area so it's very successful yeah, for for these two um, on these two areas especially. So the development of industrial synergies from one part and the development of a community on the other on the other part. Uh, Korea, okay, this is a different story. So I mean, Korea is is considered one of the pioneers of the uh, eco industrial park. Um, concept they started several years ago uh, you know the first uh, 10 years maybe they, they worked on developing the industrial i mean the synergies in the industrial parks uh, the following 10 years they started promoting synergies between the industrial parks and the and the in industries around uh, last 10 years they focused on developing clusters really at at, at the country level because i mean uh, south korea is not is not very big so and they invested um, quite a lot on a on the establishment of a coordination agency which is called korea industrial complex corporation um, which is private but basically you know uh, like 70% of budget comes from the Ministry um, of Industry. Uh, so, I mean, this um, really one um, world example of, of, of the development of, of an ecosystem for industrial parks, which took 30 years to develop. And today, I mean, you know that Korea in the last years became, I mean, always more competitive. I mean, it's 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 a it's a small it's a small country with limited resources, and they, in in the last you know years, you know, Kia, Samsung, I mean, they really managed to to develop uh, 
trying to maximize the the resource efficiency. Um, yeah, Vietnam. This, for example, one of the projects I I coordinated. Uh, yeah, we we worked with three industrial parks you know, between twenty eighteen and two thousand nineteen. Sorry, two thousand eighteen and two thousand nineteen. Uh, we work with industrial parks in the north, in the center, and in the south um, of Vietnam, trying to look for industrial symbiosis opportunities. So we found sixty at the end. Uh, for eighteen, we developed um, feasibility studies. Uh, by by the end of the project, only two were implemented, and five were were under implementation. I mean, this uh, tells us basically that uh, it's very difficult to develop industrial symbiosis. I mean, it's more difficult than working with with RCP or single companies, but if it works, the benefits are very high. So more difficult to develop. It doesn't take three months. Maybe it takes three years. But when but but when it works, uh, the impact, especially environmental impacts, uh, can can be can be very very high. Yeah, I don't know if you see it. It's a bit small, but I mean. As an example, I mean, we had you. You see, on on top of this slide, you have Heineken. I mean, before Heineken were, were was you know buying steam to produce beers, uh, and they had a lot of you know wastewater, very rich in organic material. So, uh, and then there was another you know energy company supplying uh, steam to Heineken. So basically, what what we did, what we proposed, what was implemented was to create a new company. So a biogas boiler uh, in the, say a, a, a joint venture between, between the energy company and Heineken to install and run uh, biogas boilers for Heineken. So basically biogas boiler is using the waste water from Heineken and giving back steam to Heineken. And the energy company is operating and maintaining these boilers because they are the experts on boilers. So you see uh, a win-win solution for both. I mean, the, the energy company makes more money because you know, they have uh, also these boilers to operate. Heineken makes more money because, because they don't pay for the steam any, anymore. And this was possible thanks to using the wastewater that before was discharged. It was even a problem because somebody had to treat this wastewater. Yeah, okay. So yeah, I'll, so I, I would uh, I would stop here. Um, and um, if you have any question, you can make it now or if or we can also go to um Klaus per, uh, Klaus presentation uh and he will uh, guide us through through what what Unido um is doing you know as an organization on on EAP but if you have any burning question for now I'm also happy to answer Everybody's good. Uh, I have one question: Is that uh, how much have we reserved for the for the for the session? Uh, just for me to know if I should. Uh, I think between one hour and one hour and a half. Okay, so we have still time. That's good. Very good. Um, if there is no questions, Andrea, you have anything you want to say? Can I ask you? I think that we have a question from uh, Ali. Please, Ali. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, hi, everybody. Good morning. Uh, we are very grateful for uh, 
doing this activities. Thank you very much because now in Iraq, as industrial city, we start with uh, eco uh, eco industrial city, which is uh, a Najaf project. We have a big part for this industrial city is for agriculture and uh, clever uh, management in it. We cannot say it is uh, it is complete eco industrial city, but uh, as the visibility study, they put it the company which is a DR company, they put in account taking uh, everything, uh, have a relationship with the environment and have a clean one. And this is very good one. Now we have another project that we are now want to establish it. And we looking over about which uh, state uh, in Iraq it has been suitable for. Uh, personally, I suggest Diale uh, governor uh, it is, we can call it a palm industrial city. You know, the palm, we are, we are Iraq, you know, uh, Mesopotamian. And the palm is have a very good, uh, very deep relationship with our history. So our idea to have industrial city, have a relationship with agriculture, all the industries, which is included the palm, the dates, every part of the palm, put it in it and with very clean uh, environment as a production, as a product in the end, and even that we put it in, in bio uh, agriculture, that farming we do it, and the project, our product has been mentioned to all the European markets that this product is from Iraq, and it is bio and without any industrial material we use in it. And it has been complete city. So we want that, uh, put it in our plan that the Yonido with the, your side, and we are very grateful for uh, the gentleman he have this, uh, give us good idea that we can put this in fact and how to do it. We need your help really because it is very new project. And uh, personally, I take the German uh, German one in Kenya. They do, the German people, they have a farm in Kenya for the coffee, as I know. Now everybody in Germany they drink coffee uh, from uh, farmer from Kenya, bio also. So we think over about it to put it on the, our debts. Iraq is famous in this. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Ali. I mean, if, I mean, if I can add, uh, I mean, especially if you have an industrial park which revolves around food, food production, it's, it's maybe even easier to find industrial synergies because, I mean, in, in theory, I mean, you can... You can use biomass for a lot of things. All this biomass waste can, in theory, be used for you know can be used for biogas, can be used for for pyrolysis, can be used to produce new materials for textile, etc. So, so really, I mean, if you have food, it means that you have biomass waste. It means that you can do a lot of things in terms of symbiosis. Yeah. We, we have a lot of uh, raw materials from palms. Yes, exactly. You can have even paper industries. Uh, a lot of things we can do. It. Yes, yeah. exactly. Thank you. Good. Thank you uh, very much. And it was a good introduction because uh, uh, can you see? Uh, no, I need to share my share my screen. Where do we do this again on? on uh, Zoom. I haven't been using Zoom for quite some time. Where was this share screen? Here. All right. And um, hmm. sorry. Uh -huh. Share screen. There we go. 
Uh, do you see a PowerPoint slide? Yeah. Yes. Do you see it in a presentation mode? Yeah. You see it in a like a full full screen. No, not full screen. Yes, okay. now. Now you see it in a full screen. Very good. No, no. You oh. Should, you should switch the. the switch monitors. the. Yeah. Ah. ah. No. Swap. Yes. No, it didn't work out. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yes. Now you see it in full screen. All right. Uh, very good. So one more time. Um, my name is uh, Klaus Dirk. I work with this uh, Global Echo and Disturb Parks program with UNIDO. And thank you, uh, Ali, for, for, for Mr. Ali to bring out the, the, the question about the, the whole city being part of it. I think um, Alessandro was also um, alluding to this. Uh, the part that that it's it's really not about only the industrial part or the industrial zone, the EIP concept in itself also goes wider into the surrounding community. Many times this is then shared services with the municipality, uh, say water supply, wastewater treatment, uh, energy issues are are common with both the the industrial um, area and uh, and the surrounding community. So finding the synergies there is an important part and it can be obviously then integrated to many other things. Maybe another point here on, on what you were talking about, the Kenny and the coffee and the dates from, from, from Iraq is that there are two different things here. There is the product, right? The product which is, which is being uh, 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 sort of uh, sustainably uh, produced and then the production sites and is are the production sites sustainable and this is maybe the production sites part where the eco industrial parks program comes in um i uh and and even if 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 there is a lot of uh, sustainable uh, production areas has been uh, developed in in uh, over the years and there was a lot of different terminologies uh we at uh, UNIDO uh, and the J program, we are very clear what constitutes an eco industrial park for us. We have very clear uh, performance indicators on these, and they are they are uh, developed together with our colleagues at the World Bank and, 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 and the German and Development Agency GSZ. And they are in this international framework for eco industrial parks and are divided into uh, into four different categories uh, with park management performance, environmental performance, social performance, and economic performance of the industrial park. And in a way, by, by adhering to all these different, uh, I think there are a bit more than 60 different indicators, then in our view, you have an eco-industrial park. So uh, for many parks, this this, this stays, uh, stays for some years as a sort of uh, overarching aim uh, of, of, of adhering to this, but it's also a, a, a way of uh, having a continuous process of, of improvement of, of, of the practices. And as mentioned earlier, it's not only about the, uh, I think that the whole uh, um, uh, industrial area sort of develops uh, as a part of, uh, as part of uh, trying to work towards these indicators. Uh, we looked a little bit on, on, uh, uh, or, or, or uh, Alessandro had this slide also, and this is about the how, how typically countries uh, are um, um, scoring against or parks in different countries scoring against these these um, these indicators that have been set. And it, as you would see from here, there's quite a lot of uh, good performance on the economic uh, employment generation, okay. local business, and and economic value generation in these parks. Then they are typically lagging behind when it comes to environment and in some parts of the world a bit on the on the social uh, social and park management side as well um i don't want to spend too much time on that and 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 we have the different uh, uh, sort of areas of service that where we work in with unido uh but uh, uh, maybe maybe just to uh, just to uh, on your right hand side there that there is a lot of technical support uh for uh, monitoring, benchmarking, but also development, uh, developing uh, uh, feasible um, um, synergies, fe feasible new uh, services that the park can provide uh, are a part of, of that. So you, 
if you want to work, if you want to go on such a process of developing an an, an, an eco industrial park that it goes through certain steps uh and 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 uh, the benchmarks are a part of that but then there is also more technical work when it comes to that how do you then for example have uh, what are the options of having a higher share of renewable energy what are the what are the uh, what are the water saving possibilities I'm the expense of those right uh so what we've done also in the program is that we developed some of um, some tools that you can that you can use uh on 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 the planning part we have the eip concept planning tool and the master plan uh, tool to sort of uh, uh sustainability of the master plan but and then on the operations side we have um, uh, uh, looking into the possibilities of the park management of providing uh, additional services for sustainability and also industrial symbiosis. We have uh, further working towards the government on ensuring that the policies are enabling uh, uh, this EIP development. And maybe, you know, things which typically come there, there might be barriers when it comes to to say uh, materials reuse which are then maybe hampered by 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 base legislation or 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 this type of things which needs to be sort of uh, removed in order for this synergistic and and, and cooperative way of working uh, 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 that it can take place um uh, i have actually a video can you can you hear my my voice well and it yes. all all comes clear because if if the connection is not good, I don't want to show the video. Uh, and it's a sort of a very raw video about the program. But if indeed uh, it comes out well, then I will just click play here and then we see how it goes. It takes two minutes, two and a half. Uh oh, there's no, there's no. I'll see if I if this is a. I have an issue here with the, the why it doesn't play it why why there is no let's see if I still get it maybe not there is no there's no voice I think I'll I'm gonna skip this if I don't have a quick fix on this which I doubt I have. Let me do like that. And then I'll try one more time. If it doesn't work, then I'll skip it. I think it's a different sharing modality, Klaus. Okay, uh, so it doesn't come through. No. Okay, very good. I'll skip it. It's fine. Um, oops. Industrial parks have long been engines of economic growth and societal yes. advancement. However, their benefits often come hand in hand with detrimental environmental and social consequences. Transforming industrial parks into eco-industrial parks can be a key driver for inclusive and sustainable industrial development. The United Nations Industrial Development Organization, UNIDO, supported by SECO, drives the Visionary Global Eco-Industrial Park Programme, GIPP. This programme encourages the growth of eco-industrial parks, reshaping current industrial zones into cooperative and financially beneficial systems that take environmental and social advantages into account. GIPP intervention in Colombia, Egypt, Indonesia, Peru, South Africa, Ukraine and Vietnam have resulted in success stories. UNIDO has played a crucial role in assisting nations in transforming eco-industrial park concepts into comprehensive national policies, strengthening both technical and non-technical know-how in the process. UNIDO has created a range of EIP resources, including tools, publications on best practices and lessons learned, and online training designed for both industrial park operators and policymakers. The online EIP course and publications provided on the Unido's Knowledge Hub offers an overview of eco-industrial parks and their capacity to yield economic, environmental 
and societal advantages for industrial parks, tenant businesses, governmental bodies, and nearby communities. Unido's unwavering commitment ensures that eco-industrial parks seize business advantages, optimise resource usage, elevate productivity, fortify industrial parks' social responsibility, and mitigate climate change vulnerabilities. For more information, visit www.hub.unido.org forward slash about hyphen eco hyphen industrial hyphen parks. Good. Um, uh, I will then, I can very go very quickly through this other part of the program. I think I would just like to highlight here that we have, an, there is a uh, policy part, one of the outcomes of the program, the typical programs we do, and then the one which is more working on, on in, in the park. So just ensuring that it's a com comprehensive approach there in, in every country we are working. There's a number of, of uh, uh, knowledge products. We have the lessons learned. Uh, we also have some more technical best practice series on 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 uh, on uh, topics like you have solar uh, rooftop uh, solar PVs uh, based heat use and this type of cases that we we, we collected from the from the program. Uh, uh, more importantly, those those tools that I mentioned they are available. Uh, in languages, including Arabic, uh, uh, in on our knowledge hub. So that's maybe an interesting place to go and have a look. But also there is an EIP online course that you can do by yourself, uh, just to get a bit more of a, of a flavor of, of what it's all about and, and learn a, a thing here or there. Uh, but it gives you a good, good understanding of what this is all about. Um, I could have a bit of a of a stop here just to see uh, if there's any questions coming from any of you uh, before I was thinking of uh, time permitting that I would be flipping through a, 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 a case, uh, some some of the work of the cases that we do in uh, did in South Africa, just uh, as an example. What's your any questions coming? to your mind and Andrea should I go into South Africa or should I not yeah I think I think that you you can go in the detail for very good okay specific. just just for you to Thank get you. a flavor when we do a country level intervention which doesn't it can be a little bit lighter than this but it's typically a couple of uh, a couple of years, uh, three years or so that we do, and 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 what we do there is 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 the policy support part. Uh, for for example, here in in South Africa, we done uh, done a policy analysis as I told you about the the, the ensuring that there is both uh, incentives and and uh, for for promotion of sustainability of of industrial production sites and industrial parks. Uh, uh, and also that the barriers are being removed. Uh, uh, Klaus, uh, sorry, I think we are looking at the wrong screen. Oh. So, yeah. hmm. I have a different screen altogether. Let's see, what is this now? You're looking at this screen, are you? Um, yeah, Global Knowledge Production. Okay. Mm -hmm. I wonder what this is, what I have here. That's something else. Do, 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 right. Hmm. All right. Let's see if I get. So, have you been. Uh, did you see these at even? You saw this? Yes, after the video, yes. Yeah, okay. So this is new. This is new then. And and, and this is the, the, the work from South Africa, looking at the policy analysis, uh, having a national uh, roundtable, having a process nationally to bring in all the stakeholders uh, for buy-in for, for this sort of a more 
sustainable uh, um, industrial parks development. Uh, then also working at at uh, at, at guidance. Uh, in this case, one of the, the the outputs coming out is a standard operating procedure for for the planning of of industrial parks, which could be maybe interesting also in in Iraq. Um, uh, and 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 uh, another part of the of the work in in such a country uh, project is 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 trainings. Uh, I, I will not go through the different topics that we have in these trainings, but there are certain uh, trainings which are given sort of given to a to a broad audience. The different uh, industrial parks that you have areas which are uh, organized. Uh, uh, many, many many times during these COVID years, they've been organized online, which is a very easy way then to to reach out to different parts of a country uh, without having to travel. Uh, but then we have um, uh, priority parks where we are going to more uh, detailed trainings. And the idea here is that we are bringing out some parks that can then uh, uh, provide examples for the others. Um, there are some of these numbers there on 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 uh, on on the uh, on the number of, of of trainees and so on. I think another interesting feature, which is maybe just to highlight here from South Africa, <clears throat> that that this has also included then uh, some of the industrial areas which are a part of cities. And um, we all know that many cities have grown and they are in a way engulfing some of the industrial uh, maybe previously planned. Uh, set out for industry activities, which are now then a part of the of the city, and and the EIP concept has can be brought there as well, which has happened in South Africa. Um, just uh, another flavor, just on these parks. So we have a uh, one specific uh, the green here, your your the East London Industrial Development Zone, which is the the the, the lighthouse park, the the uh, where we are providing a lot of services for them to. To, to be an example for the other parks and then we have uh then we have a couple of uh, uh parks in uh, in other parts of the country where we are also providing a bit more uh detailed uh, assistance in order to they have shown a, a high commitment and potential for improvement and therefore we want to we want to sort of to showcase that the approach works um some of these uh uh, uh things that we've been working on in this park there is there is a roadmap for the eip um, uh, development we work on this uh, on the on the industry specific company specific resource efficient cleaner production we also do feasibility studies either on those or then even better uh, uh, park wide uh, 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 improvements maybe it is uh, a synergy between companies but also a lot on the services that the companies can do, or indeed for the for the for the park to be more accept, uh, acceptable in the community, uh, community outreach, and this type of things. <clears throat> there is also uh, uh, the, the the scoping work for park management services. There's a, quite a lot of services that an industrial park management can provide to its tenants beyond normal. Uh, fencing and security, access control, uh, water, um, um, wastewater treatment, uh, energy. In, in addition to that, there is the, the the there is no limit of what sort of a cooperation you could you could uh, ensure. And many times, <clears throat> these are very appreciated by everybody because uh, uh, typically it's very complicated then to to organize them by them by yourself. If the park management takes it on. The companies are willing to pay a fee for it and or higher tenant uh, fees, so it it makes uh, sense to everybody. Um, so just on the technical part, I'm not going to go into the details of this, but you see a little bit about the the feasibility studies uh, studies that have been undertaken, pre feasibility studies in some cases, when they are a little bit bigger, the investments, but they they really. Uh, go from from uh, uh, renewable energy type of things, uh, water, uh, but into uh, you know more technical things like uh, green hydrogen production, tire waste recovery. Uh, in in this park called Pujajijaba, there is they're looking into 
uh, training center and services, but also a dedicated area for the informal trade trading, which is happening there because it's a uh, slightly uh, slightly um, lower tech, uh, actually quite a lot of uh, textile industries in the, in this in this park. And what they are they are looking at is a sort of a joint facility for 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 waste uh, uh, reuse. Um, I don't want to spend too much time on that, but this, this is just to give you a flavor. Uh, this gives you some of these uh, uh, savings that have been accruing. We are we are uh, uh, counting the electricity, the CO, uh, CO2 emissions, the water savings, uh, financial savings, and so on, the type of things that you saw also from, from uh, Vietnam. Uh, and, and we are then... Uh, trying to work with the parks in order for them to 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 uh flip over those EIP benchmarks that we discussed in the uh earlier to uh from from non-performing to 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 performing and here you see some of these journeys that this this the there are two parks here uh from from uh, South Africa uh where you would see that the one uh the one here the black is the baseline and and this uh, East London Park was already quite high, highly performing, and and it has it has sort of uh, done advances, especially on the on the social performance, uh, but uh, uh, it has still to go to 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 full. And here you have a little bit uh, a lower baseline uh, park from the beginning, and it's doing strides against uh, uh, you know coming up to a a, a good level at least. Uh, maybe just to, just to highlight that we are also moving and thanks to the, our funders from, from Switzerland to second phase where we are, uh, uh, uh doing, um, uh, trying to get from demonstrating the, 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 the concept into more replication. And, uh, and there we are looking at certain things like, uh, more like, uh, finance facilitation, standard setting. Uh, skills and competence development in addition to what has been uh, done uh, previously. So those were my slides and sorry for the confusion if there was some that you saw some other parts uh, uh, in the in uh, all the the, the, the the slides were not complete at some stage. All right, thank you very much. Any questions? Thank you very much, Klaus. So, uh, maybe now we we can uh, have some uh, uh, feedback from uh, from our stakeholder, from the commission, or from the colleagues, uh, to pave the way. Also, to we we will have time to to digest uh, all uh, your useful uh, information. But now I would like to to understand if uh, there is some uh, some comments. Uh, and how we can uh, pave the way within the framework of our initiative in uh, in Iraq for a quick uh, follow up to to define future uh, synergies. Uh, so I kindly ask uh, to Ali or other colleagues to give uh, to Alessandro and Klaus uh, an overview, a very brief overview of the situation of the. Uh, Industrial parks in uh, industrial cities in uh, in Iraq, and then we can uh, we can discuss uh, better how to move on, uh, for example, toward the ad hoc feasibility assessment for selected uh, industrial zone in the in the in the country. So Ali, Dar Ali Mojud. Uh, Ali. Hello. Yes, yes. Hello. Then it's Max Dad Ali. He can hear you, Ali. I would like to, just to, to to have you uh, spending some words uh, about the current ongoing situation of the industrial uh, parks uh, in, uh, in Iraq in order to to start uh, understanding how we can. Uh, uh, develop future uh, initiatives and synergies after this uh, introductory uh, workshop uh, 
with our colleagues from headquarters on Econ. Okay, you want me? You want sorry? You want me to give you a view about uh, how we starting the industrial city and which project now we are going on? Yeah. In general, yes. Which is the the, the yes. situation now? Uh, in view also of future uh, uh, initiatives with the with the colleagues on uh, Econ okay, okay. parts, uh, okay. also to to. Okay. To put uh, all the pieces uh, the, of the puzzle uh, on the table. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Sorry. Uh, we start as uh, some of you know with the three industrial city in the three provinces, in uh, Dikar, uh, Anbar, and Basra. In Dikar and Anbar, we, as Ministry of Industry, uh, Industrial City Corporation, we are being the uh, developer of it. We are the developer as industrial city. In Basra, which is, uh, in fact, a long time ago, it has been stopped, this project. But now we have a private sector. Uh, this is very good. We have uh, from Australian company, from Australian company, sorry, from Australia, uh, which is interesting. And we sign with them to complete the project of Basra. It is the smallest one, but it is okay. Uh, the car one, uh, the second phase of it, now we are publishing it and we have an offer. We study it now, analyzing the visibility study of it. And we are we reported later and we to be ready for sign in very soon future. About Ambar one, which is now we are the developer also, we completing the phase two. We hope uh, that in the beginning of next year, uh, the phase one, it has been published for all the industrial, Iraqi industrial uh, project to have start in it. It is 20, 2024. I hope that we can do it successfully. About the other project, we are very go uh, very fast and very well. We signed two contracts, one uh, petrochemical industries in Karbala, about 5,300 donam, which is very big a project. We sign it and they now about six months, they are start with the uh, foundation and start with it. Uh, also in Najaf, which is the biggest industrial city in Iraq, 6,000 donem. You know, Iraqi donem is about 2,500 square meter. That means 6,000 is very huge project. And it is even content uh, agriculture part, which is have a new, uh, a new technology that uh, vertical and water uh, without without uh, ground water agriculture. Besides uh, a lot of things in, in Najaf, in very good area in the middle of Iraq. It has been also very close to the highway, which is uh, between uh, Gulf Kuwait border to the Jordan and Syria border. And in the new, we have contract now that we have go to Turkey and Europe which is called a new uh, silk road. That's been, also we have it. Besides, we start in the, we are going with the transportation ministry about the Alfau port project, which is one of the biggest industrial city. We have it in the Alfau project. And this is one, one of the strategy project in Iraq. It is in the head of the uh, Arabian Gulf and it has been the connection between the Arabian Gulf and Europe uh, across highway and uh, train, very fast train, go to Istanbul, to Turkey, and then go to Europe. And we, this has been very good project. And we hope that uh, that's been big uh, transfer for Iraqi economy. Uh, also, we prepare now and we will publish very soon uh, about five 
provinces in this serial city, another provinces in this serial city. One of them now it is published. It is in Wasot, very big project, 5,000 donum also. We prepare Misan, Imara, also a project. We have uh, Muthanna and Saladin, we are working on it. Besides, we have, you know, uh, we have uh, Iraq suffering a lot from acid problem, and which has been in Mosul. We, uh, Mosul province has been effective and destroyed. So we have plan for five industrial city in Mosul, not only one. One very close to Mosul, another one in uh, Tel Kif, one in south of Mosul. We have also trying to have industrial city for automotive, very special one. Besides, we have now working on industrial city about only silver. You know, in Mosul, south of Mosul, we have mining of silver, which is a very good project, and it is about 20% of all the world uh, capacity of the sulfur that we have it in our mining in Iraq. So we want to have a very special industrial city uh, depending on the only sulfur production. As raw material to final uh, product, especially uh, uh, sil sulfur uh, acid, which is used in very industries in the world uh, as raw material. Uh, also, in Salah Din, we are planning now, we put in the final touch about it, we prepare it. Uh, and I think that we we miss you, Ali. Please, Adi. Uh, Abdullah Di Alatem is uh, uh, for Alessandro, and uh, Klaus is our uh, national technical uh, coordinator in the, in Hello. the country. Hello. Uh, I am sorry uh, that the line is being cut. So I take uh, Mrs. Mrs. Hiba line and uh, continue. Sorry for this, Andrea. Don't, okay. Don't, okay. Don't uh, yes. Yes. I, 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 I get, get it now. now. I, I, can continue. Continue. I can continue. I can continue. I can continue. Also, in Biala. You did. Sorry. Yes. Uh, this is a plan about uh, agriculture on the palm. Besides that. In Kut one, we have eco project, 5,000 in Wasot. We have eco project, very friendly uh, environment, industrial city. Beside all of those, we are movement, very big and strong movement we have to deal with our neighbor uh, countries, uh, the Iraqi Jordanian industrial and uh, uh, economic zone. It is we call it economic zone. Iraqi Jordan economic zone. It is on the border. It is contained also in this serial city, and a lot of benefits with it. Uh, besides the Saudi and Arabian, we have a movement with it in, the, in a province of Samawa, in the near the RR area that we have also project together. This is, uh, I, I give you a view, a general view. If anybody interesting on of all this project, we all also can uh, supply him with all the details also. Only as I talk only a general. As you see, the future of industry in Iraq is depend on industrial cities. We don't want to have more uh, government establishment and big project of government. No, we are going now to industrial city as the final solution for Iraqi industries and to growing up and making different uh, budget 
in the Iraq, not only depending on the oil. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ali. Mm. Adi, please. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, Klaus, for this valuable information. I really appreciate it. And thank you to our colleague, Andrea, uh, for uh, this opportunity to provide to the, our uh, counterparts uh, who are relevant for the Industrial Zone Commission. Uh, what I want to add here as a suggestion and recommendation uh, for the uh, Iraqi uh, uh, Industrial Zone Commission and also for KRG. Because the KRG, they are developing now uh, their uh, law for industrial zone. Uh, unfortunately, in the industrial zone law, there is no priorities for the uh, which sector or which kind of uh, industrial zone should uh, go ahead or so supported by the Iraqi government. But the good news here is uh, there is uh, one of the tasks or of the function of the board of the director of investment uh, industrial zone commission is developing the national industrial zone strategy here we can uh, provide the you our use this information as input to prioritize uh, the eco industrial park in the this strategy so as the uh, national uh, industrial zone strategy is working in process i wish from the, our counterparts to embed or to include the priorities of eco uh, and this uh, park in the in this strategy to guide them to uh, promoting or focusing in developing or distributing through the ge geographic provinces which uh, area should be on the uh, eco industry so my suggestion here to use this information to uh, prov uh, to uh, embed it in the uh, national industrial zone uh, strategy uh, th this is one of my suggestions for uh, the counterparts and also for the uh, KRG, uh, the team there, they are developing the law and I wish from them also to use this information to put in the law to avoid the mistake that happened in the uh, form, uh, the current law uh, of the federal government. Uh, second suggestion for the team, uh, I, uh, I hope uh, the translation of this uh, train, uh, presentation materials to uh, into Arabic and share it with the, the uh, not only with uh, the Zone Commission, because there are uh, other local uh, government, they uh, may benefit to develop their regional uh, strategy, because yeah. there are uh, every five years there is a strategy, and we need to focus on the uh, green zone, the eco and this zone park, and this uh, eco and this zone, because this will be help them as a guide for the uh, their uh, action plan and the the, uh, the, the annual plans for the regional uh, government. So please, I wish, uh, or I hope, uh, send us uh, this training material or presentation for the translation into Arabic and share it with them. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, Adi. Uh, I, I can see many, uh and rises from Intesar and Alessandro and Klaus. Who, who would like to start intervening? Intesar. I think Intesar was Please first. Intesar. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's really informative Maybe information first. from from Alessandro and Klaus. I personally learned a lot from these presentations, but I just wanted to, uh, in terms of the Iraqi size, I wanted just to ask you if uh, in few uh, sentences to give us what is the challenge that uh, expect to face in, including the uh, uh, including the regulatory financial and logistic issues in these terms that they are going to face in in, in the uh, 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 in these terms and also uh, I wanted to learn from you your from your experience you showed us a lot of uh, examples around the world. And um, here, what is, uh, if you're, from your perspective, what is the role of the government that should play uh, in terms of the, uh, uh, in terms of the uh, uh, issuing the eco-industrial uh, parts? Could I, uh, maybe I can just start because I, I, I also uh, reacted on, on Mr. Rajat's, uh, uh, you know, the, the, he, I think he nailed it with, with, with making the linkage to the policy. And in a way that, um, 
if indeed if the government is taking an active role in developing industrial areas, industrial zones, uh, perhaps even supporting those um, uh, either monetarily or, or or with expertise and 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 other facilities, uh, it is really for the for the government to ensure that 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 these are done in in you know that the areas that comes out are sustainable and that they are 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 uh, minimizing risks and 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 in, in this way becomes competitive in 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 the future so this is what we do in many countries we work with the government we see we look at the policies we see what what should be the requirements in order to at least bring in some of these things and the other part which is there is that if 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 there is indeed some sort of incentive schemes uh, from the government to industrial zones that these are then linked somehow to we are proposing our indicators but to some sort of indicators of sustainability so that the the money would not just be dished out but it would be dished out to uh, add 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 on uh, uh, activities and to activities that are done uh, properly uh, and sustainability uh, in a sustainable way. Now, when it comes to uh, to, to, to challenges, uh, you were asking about some of those challenges. I think that you have the 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 same. Uh, um, you have many of the challenges that you would have in 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 operating a normal industrial park. Maybe not all the companies are doing great every time, uh, you know. So it becomes a complication of of collecting collecting fees, and they might be uh, somewhat reluctant to add on new services if it doesn't bring in new revenue uh, directly. Uh, that that can be one thing. And then, of course, on this uh, cooperation side between between companies, there is always uh, uh, some uh, barriers basically on the trust side uh you know that uh, uh you know somebody wants to uh, you know let's pull together resources two three five companies uh how can uh, how to bring them to trust each other that this will be that is worthwhile going into there and the risk is being uh, limited so those are among those say barriers which are there and and then of course uh, in addition to 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 just knowing what the what the technical solutions are and technologies used and 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 and, and maybe the ways and, and and practices, very short but that's uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, please, Alessandro. Yeah. So uh, and I I actually I mean I prepared some slides that now I'm not going to present in the interest of time just to. To present, I mean, what we can in practice offer to the to Iraq given this situation. So, if I understand well from what Mr. Ali presented, I mean, you have basically three industrial zones: no, Deca, Ambar, Basra, which are more, I mean, which are already, let's say, quite uh, developed, and others. If I understand well, they are in planning. Or let's say they are they are being developed, uh, and um, you, Unido has a number of tools that we can apply uh, to okay from from one side to assess where your industrial parks stand. I mean, how performant they are. Where are the opportunities for improvement? This could be applied to, for example, the three industrial zones then we have other tools to guide the government in developing um uh planning for for new industrial uh zones i mean go government and park developer to guide the planning i mean so which i mean, I mean how to organize the park which services could be offered uh, where are good examples in other countries of services offered which which work well. And finally, yeah, I mean, as was already mentioned on on policy. I mean, for example, in the last uh, months, we've been working with, with Egypt. Uh, okay, first we translated, let's say, all the background materials in Arabic. So I also shared in the chat, for example, the international framework in Arabic. And then we started by 
bringing together the okay doing as, as a stakeholder analysis so i mean which are the 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 relevant stakeholders on eco industrial park developers what are they responsible for what then together we we developed a vision for egypt i mean where egypt wants to be in the next 10 50 years in terms of industrial parks and then a roadmap i mean how to get there who is responsible for what which action should be done by whom, which are the relevant regulations which need to be maybe adjusted or introduced. So, I mean, this is something that, I mean, we can offer to our member countries, I mean, to, to industrial zone developers and to, and, and to the government for, for, for policy development. Yeah, I'm sorry, I could not uh, present everything, but I mean, I wanted to show you, for example, what we've achieved in the last couple of years in Ukraine and Egypt, just for you to have an, an idea, but I guess um, you got it anyway. Yeah, yeah, sure, but as an introductory meeting, it uh, was, uh, was very useful also to, to, to pave the way for uh, hopefully... Next step, as said by my my colleague Hadi, of course uh, we have uh, uh, today also four participants from uh, KRG from the Kurdistan uh, region. So we have uh, the DG, Mr. Kovan, uh, Srud, uh, Mustafa, and Ganji. I I think that uh, uh, Srud would like to to intervene to intervene, please. Okay, uh, my name is Sirud. I'm the director of planning in uh, General Directorate of Industrial Development. Uh, I would uh, thank you so much for this for preparing this kind of meetings. Uh, my question, uh, as uh, Dr. Abdul Hadi mentioned, uh, what kind uh, of support Unido can uh, provide to KRG? Uh, for uh, preparing uh, uh, regulations uh, and instructions also uh, to um, uh, establishing uh, um, industrial zone. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. well, be before leaving the, the, the word to, to Alessandro and Klaus, uh, I would like to uh, to tell that uh, within the framework, uh, so we, we have a different uh, level of, of intervention. As uh, explained by Alessandro and Klaus, they are experts uh, on that, uh, working on the, on the, in the branch of uh, UNIDO at quarter that is uh, focused on eco-industrial parts and they apply the methodology of UNIDO everywhere uh, on the basis of the projects that are funded by by mm -hmm. by the donor of uh, of unido now the the idea is uh, uh, that within the framework of the project that we are implementing now the investment promotion for iraq in this phase uh, we have a dedicated budget uh, for uh, selecting uh, some specific uh, services uh, and tools uh, like, for example, feasibility study, ad hoc assessment uh, provided by uh, UNIDO colleagues. And this is the, the, first, uh, the first thing that we have to, to discuss in the, in the coming weeks uh, to hopefully uh, implement in the coming months. Then there is a, se a second level. So once uh, we did, uh, uh, we, we choose from the menu a la carte <laughs> of uh, our colleagues, uh, some specific services, uh, choosing uh, one or two uh, industrial zone, uh, defining uh, an ad hoc re regulation uh, with a specific uh, seminar for the decision maker uh, and carry out a feasibility assessment for a specific uh, zone, then, uh, if uh, this process, this exercise will be successful, we can think about uh, in defining, this is uh, our aspiration and our uh, uh, hope for the future, to new project, communicating to the potential donors, Italy, but not only Italy, we can uh, be very, very open to, to find new, new donor in order to define 
a specific uh, project uh, demand driven from a federal authority or, and or from the KRG authority in order to implement a wider uh, project uh, on uh, eco in, in industrial zone. So we have this these two two levels. Potentially, the, the the colleagues in Vienna can do everything. Uh, now, uh, I would suggest to to start uh, little by, by little with the specific uh, activities that we can uh, we can uh, cover and implement within the framework of the ongoing project, and then be ambitious for uh, hopefully once we understood that is uh, uh, something useful and viable for Iraq. Uh, to design uh, an ad hoc uh, an ad hoc project. I don't know if also for the for the colleagues uh, in yeah. Vienna and in Iraq is a is a good way to 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 move on, but I think that is a, is the best way to to start our uh, our potential com, com collaboration. Sorry, Alessandro and Klaus was just to 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 better uh, uh, specify that. I know, but I, I think you, Andrea, I mean, you, you clarify it, I mean, very well. And this is also a similar approach that we followed in other countries. I mean, for example, in Colombia, we started you know, years ago with a, with a small pilot project. So in this pilot project, we, we selected, I mean, a couple of industrial zones just to, I mean, to, to assess them and to identify and show what they could achieve if they switch to eco industrial parks. Um, so basically, we, we identified which improvements I mean was was possible to do. I mean, like um, like an example for other parks, but also for the government. I mean, to understand what was the potential, and then when we got you know funding from Switzerland, we developed you know, full fledged project, not for three months or six months, but for four years and this time we developed all the let's say the the policy environment in which i mean it which is something that takes time you really need to 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 raise awareness of you know of many stakeholders to communicate why it is important to show the example so it's it's not just just the you know just the roadmap and that's it it's really about you know engaging the people so yeah i completely support this approach. So uh, this is why after this introductory uh, workshop, uh, our uh, our role, we will stay all, all together in the same picture in order to define uh, uh, in a precise way the, the, the next step. Uh, also because uh, uh, to define and write a new project uh, for that uh, we have to to create uh, some uh, references on that to be also uh, also to, to 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 have a solid pro proposal to the to the potential donor uh, to understand uh, all uh, to put on the same table all the stakeholders uh, uh, from the private sector, but uh, of course uh, you from the from the institutions, uh, in order to understand if it's something viable. This is why we have to to test uh, this uh, unique approach on eco industrial zone uh, on uh, a specific uh, uh, pilot uh, initiatives. That is what uh, we would like to do in the in the in the short term. So I don't know if you, if uh, colleagues from the uh, commission uh, or Hadi, you would like to, you have some uh, specific, or Mohamed uh, or Intesar, you have some specific uh, question on uh, what share till now that could be useful for, as a basis for the further discussion. استاذ علي عندكم سؤال من الهيئة أو في شيء تحبون تناقشوا استاذ علي أي أحد من جماعتكم عندكم في شيء تحبون تناقشوا أو ت... إحنا بس عفوا ست نريد نشكر أليساندرو 
واندريا والجماعه اللي هذا يعني ثانك يو فيري ماتش فور ثانك يو فيري ماتش اندريا ثانك يو يونيدو فور ذس نايس ميتينج and uh, it is very interesting uh, i found out that especially the denmark one we have something set to it uh, eco industrial city in denmark and we hope in soon future we go deep deep very deep in this thank you very much it has give us very nice view about what we are expecting in the future and what we can do that uh, This is a future industry, and besides the smart industrial city, eco and the smart industrial city, we have a very big uh, for us. It has been our uh, our uh, uh, our new. goals that we no, don't want only industrial normal industrial city we want a smart and eco one thank you very much thank you very much thank you thank you goodbye maybe and yeah, sorry. sorry maybe and i just wanted to say from what alessandro shared with us the possibility of cooperation in the nearest future Uh, by uh, when he said that the the tools that you need to already have on the assessment tools for the existing uh, industrial zone this could be great if we start to uh, maybe list it together and to share it with the uh, commission to see how applicable to apply uh, such tools or such assessment and on the same time for the new uh, Uh, suggestions for the industrial zone the how the management and the roadmap and also other tools that you mentioned already alessandro this is very effective i think if they wanted to start with the new projects as mr ali said they have a lot of plans in their ma- uh, mind so it will be great if it is started with a sim- uh, systematic way yeah. Uh, yeah. and with giving uh, some examples from uh, a successful uh, experience around the world Cool. Thank you. So this maybe will be our role for the next activities to do the assessment for such kind of tools and then to see pick up which is which one of these applicable to apply. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Alessandro, for the moment, I share we with, with you in the chat the the, the link uh, with I the saw, Arabic yeah. version of uh, EAP manual. And now, thanks to the support of. Uh, Uh, Mr. Ali, Mr. Kovan, uh, and all the the other uh, uh, colleagues uh, from UNID, from the Commission, who will do this uh, exercise to understand uh, with the resource that we have now for this project, uh, what we can do from a regular point of view and from the uh, operative point of view, uh, choosing a, a, a pilot uh, uh, in the industrial zone in order. To, to start uh, uh, understanding uh, if uh, these initiatives could be become something bigger hopefully in the in, in the future so, so, sorry klaus you you were speaking before no 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 it's good ah, okay perfect so if there is no any other uh, comments uh, or question I think I think that for the for the moment uh, we can uh, uh, conclude this introductory workshop. For any uh, question, uh, of course, uh, uh, now I will uh, I will send you a, a wrap up follow up mail uh, in order to define the the, the next step with uh, all of us in uh, in uh, in CC. Uh, and with the Intesar and the other colleagues, we will do this uh, this exercise uh, to to come back to Alessandro and Klaus uh, for the first quick uh, uh, action. Yeah, thank you, Andrea, for organizing this, and yeah, thank you, colleagues, for your no, no. for your time. We 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 thank you, Alessandro and Klaus, for your uh, availability. For your time, for those two very interesting uh, uh, two hours for us, uh, as you know, 
Iraq uh, now is a, is a is a country that is very keen to to have a solid industrial development. This is uh, this is the moment. Uh, they have uh, all the condition uh, uh, to do that, uh, and <clears throat> so we we hope to to go in the in the right uh, direction and uh, uh, of course uh, starting from uh, from scratch or uh, on what is already existing, uh, uh, focusing on uh, eco uh, industrial parts is something that, uh, in my opinion and also the opinion of uh, our friends from uh, from Iraq is. Uh, is very is very crucial. So thank you very much, and uh, as keep in touch, we will uh, we'll talk uh, about next uh, steps very 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 soon. Thank, thank you. you. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Bye. You too. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.